Welcome everyone. My name is Sagar and in this video I will be explaining you the difference between flow, shared flow, state flow and live data in Kotlin. So this video is a part of our Android interview questions playlist. So make sure to subscribe the channel and access the playlist link in the description. So this is my sample Android project. I have created these functions to emit a flow, a state flow and a shared flow. And if you are already familiar with flow, so you already know that this is a flow builder that we can use to emit a flow. And inside this, I am just repeating five times. So five values will be emitted 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And every time I am using this emit and then I am using this delay of one second. So let us just understand what will be the behavior of our flow. So uh, I will just write here launch or I can just directly use flow dot collect. So this collect is a lambda function that we can use and it will just emit the values here and I can just use it as it. So I will just use a log statement. I will just write here first collector value equal to it. So it is very common it will start emitting the values one by one and first it will emit zero then after one second one then two three four and then it will stop. But what is the special thing that will make this separate from other flows? So it is a normal flow and normal flow is a kind of cold flow. And cold flow means if there are multiple collectors, then they all will have separate flow values. Uh, so that means for my multiple collectors, so this is my one collector. If I am creating another collector for this same flow object, then this new collector will have all the values starting from 0 to 4. So this is my first collector, then let me name it as second collector. But there is a problem here because we are using here global scope dot launch. Then first all the values will be emitted here. Then after that, the new collector will start collecting. So let's try to run this application. And we'll just check the tag in logs. So 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And then our second collector will start collecting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we want to parallelly collect these values, then we will use them with a coroutine. So I will wrap them in another coroutine, both of them. So if you are already familiar with the coroutines, then you will understand what is going on here. Still, let me explain. So this is a whole global scope dot launch. That means it is a separate coroutine and it will, it will execute all the values one by one. First, this will execute. That means we will get a flow object and it will start emitting values and uh, and and in the next line we will launch another coroutine and whatever is happening inside of this coroutine so that will not be relatable to this scope so for this scope this coroutine will launch and then it will forget and then we will launch this coroutine that means first we will start collecting with this collector and after just uh, this line of execution then we will start collecting with this uh, this collector so both of these collector will be collecting parallelly and for the difference let me write here e so now let's check so you can see both of these collector are collecting the values parallelly and uh, you can also observe here these both collector are getting the values from the initial point from 0 to 4 because this is a cold flow and uh, that makes them different from these both hot flows so shared flow and state flow, these both are hot flows and let me explain you them. So now let us try with this shared flow. So what is a shared flow? Shared flow as the name suggests, it will share the values between all the collectors. So this is my first collector, so it will start collecting from zero. And it is my second collector as it is parallelly moving, so it will also get the initial value as zero. But suppose I am adding this collector after a delay of Suppose 3000 millisecond, that means the first value I will be getting is after 3000 millisecond, that can be 3 or 4. So the first value that this second collector will be having is 3, not 0. But uh, let me check with this normal flow. So for a normal flow, as I already told you, it is just a cold flow. So it will always start collecting from 0 to 4 for, for both the collector. Whenever this collector starts the collecting after 3000 millisecond or 6000 or 10,000, it will always start from 0 to 4. But uh, let me let me also show you. So 0, 1, 2, it is our first collector and then our second collector also started because 
this 3000 second 3000 millisecond is done and then it will always have from 0 to 4 but instead of this normal flow if we are using shared flow that means it will have a shared value for all the collectors so first this collector will start that means it will have 0 1 2 and then after 3000 millisecond second collector will also come then the next value for shared flow will be 3 so let us try this let me clear the logs so one uh, i will tell you why we are not getting a zero here so you can see one two and then the first value is three here so why it is not having zero here because when we are emitting the first value from our shared flow uh, it can be possible that uh, this first collector is not started collecting uh, and the reason is because we are using here another coroutine so if we are collecting this flow just start just after we are getting the object and uh, let me comment this for now so we will always have 0 to 4 value even for our shared flow because uh, we are just starting after it is uh, emitting the values so you can see 0 1 2 3 4 we will have all the values and uh, and if we are using it inside of another coroutine it can be a possibility that uh, we might have skipped the first value so now you know shared flow will have a shared context and uh, it will always emit the same value for all the collectors even if there is a third collector so let me copy paste this and if the third collector is uh, starting after 4000 millisecond then uh, it will it will also have it will also have a common value that is emitted between this first and second collector so one two three now second collector is there and third collector okay third collector is not there because we have already emitted all the values and that is the difference what makes it different from state flow let me explain so for the shared flow it will only emit the values to its collector when the value is actually emitting so so uh, so a collector is already present and after that we are emitting the value as 1 2 3 4 but if a collector is starting the collection after all the values are already emitted suppose after 6000 millisecond so after 6000 millisecond i am adding a new collector to my shared flow but uh, my shared flow is saying okay i have already emitted all my five values within just five seconds and uh, i am adding a new collector after six seconds so my shared flow doesn't have any value to emit anymore and uh, that's why my second collector will not have any value uh, with this shared flow okay one one two three four and uh, there is no second collector because our shared flow has already emitted all the values and uh, there is nothing to collect from our second collector but but in the case if we are using a state flow here so you can just consider the state flow as a, a state holding shared flow so if you check internally for this state flow so this state flow is internally implementing the shared flow so we can definitely say a state flow is a type of shared flow that holds the state so for this state flow you always have to pass a initial value because this state flow will always always have a value before emitting and after emitting also so you can just access that value from flow dot this flow object dot value because this is a state flow object and with this value field we can always access the current value inside of our flow so that means when our first collector started collecting so we will have all the values from 0 1 2 3 4 and after 6000 millisecond there will be a value that is the last value which was emitted and the last value will be 4 so our second character will have 4 0 1 2 3 4 and after 6000 millisecond our second collector is having 4 so suppose this is a flow of all the values and uh, i am i have added a collector here so for a normal flow a collector will start collecting from the initial value to the end value and if any other collector is there after suppose 5000 millisecond so so there will be so there will be a copy of this flow and uh, suppose suppose it is after 5000 millisecond 
there will be another collector that will start collecting from initial value to all the values so this is so this is a normal flow for a shared flow this is the flow first collector is here and suppose our second collector has started collecting after 5000 milliseconds so second collector will always have the value from here so suppose there is a new collector that is collecting at this point so at shared flow there is no value that is emitting at this point but for a state flow there will always be a value that is getting stored so it is kind of a buffer or you can consider it as a box that is storing the value so the latest value that is stored at my state flow value is this point so suppose the value here is 4 so the 4 value will remain at this point and this collector will only get the 4 value so i hope you understood the difference between flow shared flow and state flow and uh, now let me tell you what is live data so for a live data you can consider it as the older version of our state flow so it works exactly as our state flow but state flow has the power of flows in kotlin so 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 for a live data let me create a object mutable live data of type int and this there is one problem with this live data that it always needs a observer that is the life cycle owner so 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 in my case this is the activity and uh, this can be benefit and this can be also a problem because without our without our life cycle observer we cannot use this live data to observe any values and this is not the case with our flow values we can anywhere collect our flow we just need to create a coroutine but for this live data we always need a life cycle owner and inside it we can just get our data suppose it it is an integer here so this will be the updated value from our live data but but another drawback of not using live data is if we have to if suppose if we are having a list of integer here list of integer and we have to manipulate this list so if we have to use map and suppose this is a large list or if we have to reduce or if we have to perform any other operations on this list or any large data so that will be always in our main thread but if we have to manipulate any values from our flow so we can always use coroutines so that is a benefit of always using a flow and i will also recommend you if you are using a kotlin project then make sure you go with flow and in java project you obviously cannot use this flow because it is purely kotlin concept so only use live data if you are working with your java project or if you need this life cycle awareness behavior so life cycle awareness means as you can also see here so it will start receiving events when you are in started or resumed state but now we also have these repeat on life cycle apis so you can just uh, use these things with your flow and you can also make your flow life cycle aware you just have to pass a state here so state dot started so that means this thing will repeat whenever our started state is there in the application so i hope you understand the difference between these four classes and if you want to learn more about Android, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching.